Welcome to One UN, One Voice with Ahmad Saleem. Food and nutrition are central to the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly in achieving zero hunger by 2030 through transforming the global food and agriculture system. However, projections show that the world is not on track. Most indicators are also not on track to meet global nutrition targets. According to the latest State of the Food Security and Nutrition in the World report, the food security and nutritional status of the most vulnerable population groups are likely to deteriorate further due to the health and socio-economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. To discuss food, nutrition and security, government's vision and United Nations support, we have a panel of members today here with us. We have Scaling Up Nutrition Sun Movement National Coordinator Mao Felipe da Costa. We have National Public Health Director Mao Frederick Bosco. We have Director General of Agriculture Dr. Maria Odette Gutierrez. Hey, Welcome hello. to the show. We have United Nations World Food Programs Representative Ms. Cecilia Garzin. And then we have UNICEF's country representative to Timor-Leste, Mr. Bilal Durrani. Welcome to you all, to the show, to the One UN, One Voice program. Thank you for your time today. Let me put together a question to set the scene for all of us. As they say in Timor-Leste, a country that has made significant development progress, nearly 300,000 people, which is 22% of the total population, are estimated to have food insecurity. 47% of children under five years of age are stunted. 8.6% suffer from acute malnutrition. And 23% of women of reproductive age are anemic. But this is close to an emergency. So I would ask the question to the panel, I'll go to the government colleagues and I'll go to the UN colleagues, that what is government's response to that? and how UN Timor-Leste is supporting the government of Timor-Leste and the people of Timor-Leste. So may I start uh, going round the table and may I start with uh, Mana Cecilia? Thank you very much. Um, I think the government of Timor is doing a lot of good work and uh, we need to congratulate it, um, the advocacy that had been generated with the information that you just present in terms of um, food insecurity, chronic malnutrition, had become one of the pillars of work that the government want to develop going forward. So I think we need to congratulate them. And that have generated a national nutritional plan that covered not only nutrition but food security, which we as the UN are contributing very strongly and uh, it gives uh, a, a very uh, good pathway of how the government needs to develop. Also, um, they have allocated funds. Uh, not only they have done the plan, but they have allocated funds that may not be at this time enough for what we require, but it's a good uh, starting point too. And then, of course, um, uh, the, the part of um, they have created not only the plans, the allocated the money, but they have created units that are basically responding in an active way at the highest level, uh, not only a strategic but the implementation part of the projects that needs to happen in order to change the story that we are having today. Thank you, Mara Cecilia. Ma Felipe, what is your take on this? <coughs> Thank you very much. Thanks to the One UN Voice. I one would like to begin by saying that um, Timor Leste is very committed to achieve the SDG, and especially the SDG number two uh, to achieve uh, to end hunger, achieve food security, improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture is in our top agenda for until 2020-2030. However, um, as you have said in your introduction that we are uh, still uh, not made a big progress in terms of uh, the indicators relevant to food insecurity and nutrition. We made some progress, by the way. 
we reduced the stunting by 3%. If you recall, there was 50.2% uh, in 2015. Now it's 47.1%. We also reduce wasting by 11%. We also increase breastfeeding by 10%. And immunization is now increased so much, uh, cover much larger population. This is a success. We are on the right path. And this success is happened because we are all working together. UN, development partners, government, institution in the government, we are all working together. However, the progress that we want is not, uh, progress that we have is not at the level of what we expected. We want to accelerate our progress so that we can achieve SDG 2. As Timor Leste want to become an example country around the world to achieve SDG 2. And we need your help. We need UN help. We need uh, donors help. Um, in what way? We need a good plan in place. Timor-Leste have developed a consolidated national action plan. Uh, we call it SINA. This multi-sectoral action plan is focusing on how can we improve food security and improve nutritional situation in Timor-Leste. It identifies fewer intervention instead of many. Um, and it has a common result identified and common indicators identify. So what is still missing under that synap is that we need to have a mechanism to track the investment around that uh, priorities that we set in the priority uh, synap. And we need to know what will cost us from now to 2030. Only with that, we will know what level of investment we need to make uh, government need to make. At this stage, we are not sure if government is investing less or is investing more because we need a calculated cost of interventions. And this will help us to uh, correctly mobilize local resources. Only then, if we know the gaps, we can uh, reach out for support. So I think. Um, Timor-Leste is on the right path, and this right path is happened because we have a, a good support behind us, uh, UN and development partners. However, the result need to be uh, accelerated, and for this we need to work together even more. Felipe, thank you very much. You mentioned two very important things that, you know, one, uh, the resource mobilization. And the second element, you mentioned that there is a gap in terms of monitoring and evaluation. So what is stopping us as government, as a country, as a whole, to, to not to monitor, to not to track, and not to mobilize those resources? So what are the hindrances? What are the barriers in terms of you know, uh, fulfilling those gaps? I think I must uh, clarify that it is not lack of monitoring. Right. It is, the monitoring we are doing is in a silos, in a scattered way. So that we is need one to of make the, a com combined uh, effort. And if we make a combined effort, this will give, tell us a real good, uh, clear story of where we are going. And if we don't, if we share the report, and it is, if the report is, is hosted under the government auspices, this will help us. And I think we can do it. Uh, it's, it's a world with better communication now. It will be a world with better co coordination now. It is not difficult to, uh, to make that happen, and I think we can do it. We are doing it, and I think we can improve it to make it better. Oh, that's great. That's, that's really great. Mao well, Felipe, thank you so much. I mean, I think let's move on to uh, DG Odete. DG Odete, Mao Ma Felipe just mentioned, I think I will take this forward. Uh, we are monitoring. We are tracking, but of course there are still gaps. But one of the major gaps he has identified is coordinated approach, um, a joint strategy. Government, UN, development partners, civil society, everyone together. Yeah. So what is, what is I mean, uh, please uh, tell us and enlighten us uh, that what is the take of Ministry of Agriculture and what is your strategy in terms of responding to this situation? Thank you for 
one UN and one voice inviting me as a uh, representative for Minister of Agriculture for this most important event. I would like to start with uh, the legal framework on what uh, MAF is working on. I think we are basing our, 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 of our uh, strategic development plan 2011-2030, MAF policy and strategy and also the, the AIDS uh, constitutional government strategy as well as legislation decree law and law, all institutional uh, framework that uh, working uh, to achieve the MAF, uh, MAF uh, objective, particularly in terms of uh, food security and, and nutrition. In terms of collaboration with UN agency, I think uh, MAF uh, is uh, strengthening to have this holistic and integrated approach. Why I'm saying it? Because in the reality, we're working together based on the, the, the good coordination, the great coordination between us. I just would like to, uh, to give an example that during the COVID, even we face in the very, the very difficult time, but in order to identify the pests that very infested uh, rice and mice in the field, we, we had a good coordination with the UN agency. So WFP uh, and another U.S. agency to support us in terms of how we can work together to identify the aspects that, uh, that they brought uh, the impact to the agricultural production. I think uh, the more coordination, the better coordination that we have, and we need to improve more the coordination, as mentioned by Mount Philippe, that we need the transparency of sharing documents. This is important, uh, important things that we need to do, as well as not only with UN agency, we need to involve all stakeholders that working with us. For a, a simple uh, example, in terms of establishing this food system pathway, we've been involved with all stakeholders that involved with us, UN agency, development partners, uh, civil society, and um, entrepreneurs and things. So we talk about the food and nutrition is the is a most important case that we don't want. Uh, we don't want alone, but we work together as a as a group in, in, in order to to facing the difficulties on how we facing this uh, food insecurity as well as uh, nutrition. Thank you, thank you, Mara Date. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Let's move on to UNICEF representative, Mr. Bilal Durani. Uh, Mr. Durani, would you please? Uh, uh, the question is the same. It's an emergency situation, sort of an emergency situation. 300,000 people um, at the risk of food insecurity, malnutrition, 47% stunting of the children. Um, what is your take on that in, in, in relation to what uh, Mana Cecilia has said, Mao Felipe, um, Mana, uh, Mana Odete has just mentioned? So, what is uh, your take on that? What is UNICEF's? strategy and what is UN's strategy in your understanding? Thank you, Amin Bhai. Um, now, as you mentioned, um, this country has come a long way uh, in the last 20 years. Unfortunately, the start was already pretty bad. Um, so the numbers are still high. So we still have a long way to go as well. Um, I would say we're not close to an emergency. We are in an emergency um, because 47% of children being stunted is really high. It's the fourth largest in the world. Uh, it's the highest in this region, uh, but as Mount Felipe mentioned, it was even worse uh, uh, 20 years ago. So there have been improvement, uh, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, you know, as they say, the, the coffins of, uh, of, of a child is the, the heaviest. Uh, and if you go around Delhi, you see these shops that sell coffins and you see the small ones. It really breaks your heart. Um, so we still have child mortality, which is 300% more than the average of uh, the whole East Asia and the, and, and the Pacific. So for, for UN, of course, this is uh, one of our top uh, priorities uh, as part of our uh, uh, UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework uh, that we have signed with the government. Uh, nutrition and food security is one of the six top priorities uh, that we focus on. Um, and the whole idea of UN is to strengthen the government uh, so that uh, the government has uh, sufficient systems and capacities and an enabling environment uh, with laws and legislations and everything 
so they can respond to this crisis. So uh, everything that we do that's, uh, that's mentioned in terms of uh, uh, you know, coming up with um, supporting the in evidence generation, for example. Uh, we have not right now uh, latest data on nutrition and food security, so that is a, a very good start. So we know clearly uh, what is the state of uh, food and uh, food insecurity and nutrition uh, throughout the country. Um, and then also in terms of enabling environment, uh, we work very closely in different laws and legislations. Recently, the government uh, approved. Uh, the breast milk substitute code decree law. Uh, there's a decree law on food fortification, which is in the pipeline. Um, uh, uh, nutrition and food security is a state priority, which is quite uh, remarkable. The establishment of the stunting unit uh, under the Prime Minister's office, led by Mon Felipe. Uh, these are all very, very positive signs. Um, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, so for UN, um, we try to also uh, help the government come up with uh, uh, pilots that can be scalable, uh, good practices from all around the world uh, that can also help um, and have a coordinated approach. I think the biggest challenge that uh, Juan Felipe alluded to is that uh, food security and uh, nutrition is a multi-sectoral issue. So there is no one uh, line ministry or part of the government or no one UN agency uh, that can respond to it. So unless we all come together, uh, only then we will be able to respond to it. So the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Public Works, uh, for WASH, uh, even Ministry of uh, uh, Industries and, and Commerce, etc. All of them have a role to play. So uh, that's uh, you know a little bit how uh, we look at it as as UN trying to uh, support it in a coordinated and uh, comprehensive manner. Thank you, Bilal Bhai. Thank you so much. I think you have again alluded to the joint work and coordination. Before I move on to Dr. Fedrick, I would just let me go back to Mao Felipe and uh, Manadete. Uh, is government taking steps in terms of joint coordinated approach? Are we taking some steps to bring all the, all the development sector together? So, I mean, uh, if you could just uh, share your reflections. Um, I will say yes. Uh, we started by developing a right legal framework in place. Um, we want a, a, a coordinating system that is uh, uh, in a systemic way. Right. That's why we started with uh, uh, introducing a legal framework that works towards uh, enforcing people or uh, encouraging people to work together. So that's why uh, um, First, we started with district decree law to establish uh, the standing unit under the prime minister office. <coughs> but government is also working on another legislation uh, that it will allow um, us to uh, start the coordination even from the strategic development level. So we have a coordination mechanism system for jointly develop the strategy towards improving nutrition and food insecurity. We will also have a, a mechanism to, to jointly develop programs uh, for, and then we will also uh, jo uh, develop a mechanism to kind of uh, uh, oversight uh, the implementation of the interventions. Uh, so this is a quite a good move. And I must say this is a, 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 a in the right direction. As I have uh, explained in my early introduction that the, we made in, increase, we make improvement in terms of uh, decreasing stunting, decreasing wasting, and also increasing breastfeeding. Um, the law of physics says if there is an imported po uh, forces that make impact, that means that forces is works. So we are uh, making uh, these changes because whatever our intervention have impact. However, the, the impact uh, the size of, of the impact also depend on the forces we are introducing. So I'm saying the level of investment may not be at the right level. That's why the progress is so small. We only reduce 3% of stunting. We should be able to, re we want to reach 25% um, or less of uh, people un stunted Stunt. in 2030. That means that you need to double or triple your investment and you need to work more closely together instead of scatter your forces. And um, another step that government is taking is the development of SINAP. This consolidated national action plan, or I call it uh, jo joint sector action plan, is actually right path. 
it has input from everybody, from the government agencies, from the UN, from development partners, from civil society, from academia, young, young people. This synap is was developed with um, with uh, references from existing strategy document, from the government policy um, on food and security, 2017. Uh, so we take some of the intervention from there. From the Zero Hunger Action Plan 2011-2014-2019. So we, we take that uh, uh, from there. Even from National Development Strategy 2011-2030. So some of the intervention I introduced in Synapse actually from the existing strategy. And it's also, uh, the, the, the Synapse was also sent around to uh, scaling up movement secretariat for their uh, reflections and they told us that that is met the international best practices so now that we have right um, uh, document in place to guide us now that we have legal framework that will allow us to work together uh, mm. better now we need to move on we to, need to the move practicalization on. Yeah, exactly. of those we documents need... and those strategies exactly the one very important is to know how much money we have to invest that is very important. Yeah, that is very, yes. very important. I mean, let me yes. move on to Mana Odete. Mana Odete, your take, I mean, you know, how we can strengthen our response, uh, how we can double up our resources, and how we can bring all the partners together. Yes. Uh, I'd like to answer first for your last question, how we can uh, involve all the all, all partners together. In, I think in the Ministry of Agriculture, we have one unit, one unit that we, we, we just improved the unit. Before we had this unit, uh, what we call it, the Development Partners Unit, which is under uh, Minister of, uh, under Minister Cabinet. The role of this unit is to involve all the stakeholders, including uh, UN agencies, in order to collaborate and in order to work together to identify what are the what are the programs that invested by UN and what are the programs that invested by the Ministry itself. So how we can uh, match all the gap and also identify the gap and, and match the resources that provided by both sides. So this unit uh, is just started and also we have this uh, one director who take responsibility for that in terms of uh, work in collaboration way with, with uh, international agency, particularly the UN. And also, as you mentioned by, mentioned by Mount Philippe, that we have seen up, we have all the programs that have been invested, all the strategies that you have. Uh, in the Ministry of Agriculture, we have this uh, updated uh, food, uh, food security policy. We have this in 2014, we updated in 2017, now in 2021, we updated based on our MAF and uh, MAF policy and strategy. All the needs that identify, all the challenges, all the difficulties been there. Now we, we, we have the strategy on how to, to implement all the programs that can respond the the issues of food security and, and also nutrition as well. Apart from that, in the ministry also we have one national directorate of food security, which is take responsibility more for food security issues. This, the, this national directorate is working uh, with the uh, relevant ministries and also as well as UN agency in order to, to respond the difficulties that we're facing, particularly in the in food security issue. The government also uh, implement the strategy on how to improve uh, food uh, production and productivity, as well as how to bring people to access the market, to have this, uh, to improve their life. They can sell, they can have some income uh, resources, and then they can bring their, their kids to the school, and particularly how we can uh, teach our people on how to diversify food not only rice and mice, but the tubers, some protein contains, uh, meats and things, legumes, on how we can teach people how they can consume. Uh, we have another program that we work together with another agency, for example, Tomac. We provide the curriculum of foods, uh, the curriculum of foods, then we, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, they identify what are the uh, contents of nutrition within this kind of food. This is one example that work together uh, and also work uh, not in the, uh, 
particularly in the in the base with our our um, extension workers and the dissemination of the information we need to provide apart from the the strengthening of the government to to increase uh, production of foods yeah. thank you thank you mana uh, mana odete i mean uh, consumption of food is one thing but the production of food is also another area i think we will come back to that uh, we'll request you again for your reflections let's move on to dr fredrick bosco Th sorry mao uh, you know we we were following the primary question then we broke the chain of line chain of uh, then we broke the chain of questions and then you know there was a little bit of digression so what is uh, ministry of health's response in terms of the emergency we were talking about 300000 people which is almost 22% of the population under the risk of uh, food insecurity malnutrition uh, stunting so what is what is ministry of health's response in terms of short term response long term response planning and uh, actualization of that plan over to you mao uh, patrick thank you very much uh, for for the opportunity uh, to be present here um i think it is uh, aware on this uh, this uh, with uh, intervention in the different uh, age of group uh, in the, of the people uh, the intervention we are looking of uh, looking also uh, the here related to the adolescent care if we do the the intervention in the adolescent girl just to prepare them uh, their uh, health condition so that once they uh, they are prepared uh, once they got uh, they are coming to the pregnant uh, uh, stage their organism is really ready to prevent that uh, the growth of the children in the uter in the intrauterine is really uh, not stand, uh, not uh, malnourished and also uh, we also do the intervention on the uh, pregnant mothers we are calling the antenatal care uh, service delivery that uh, minister of health right now is try to strengthen uh, in in the national health system and also we are also looking after uh, mothers that uh, <coughs> give the breastfeeding to their children so different intervention um, uh, minister of health uh, has to do to en enhance Uh, so that we can prevent we, so that we can detect and also uh, prevent the malnutrition uh, in 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 the children and for that minister of health uh, last year already launched a national uh, health sector strategy 2020 2026 which is will lead minister of health actions to address this uh, malnutrition issue in in the country dr fredrick thank you very very kind of you uh, mana cecilia uh, if i could come back to you food insecurity or security why timor leste at first place has food insecurity what are the drivers of food insecurity in the country would you please allude to that and would you enlighten thank us you. <coughs> thank you as mentioned by our director of health a uh, poverty number 1 is basically why people are not able to get and access food in the quantity and the quality that they require that i think is the the basic if you look at the percentage of poverty is around 48% the population more or less going in line with the, with the number of stuntings that we have in the country so it's very easy then we have a very a uh, low local and low production of foods in the quantities and the qualities of the food that we require then of course uh, we have uh, the um, the part that as most of the food is imported for the country and the increase of prices that have uh, in the market international market Uh, being experienced due to the war in Ukraine and other factors then it makes even more difficult for the normal population and the poorest sectors of the country to access food so um if we look at these uh, elements that's why we basically have um a very um high level of malnutrition high level of inequality because you have 48% of the population and then of course uh, you 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 get the results in terms of development which is what we are looking here 
that are very, very uh, not attained because the population are not able to access and be able to thrive with the human capital that will allow them to basically move the country. So it's a very serious issue that have a very, very simple uh, base, which is poverty. <laughs> Well, Mana Cecilia, I mean, that leads to another sub-question. For instance, I mean, you also mentioned um, low production, right? Um, low purchasing power, which links to poverty. I mean, we as UN, <coughs> we as World Food Program, we as FAO, we as UNICEF, we as other UN agencies, what has been our response? I mean, in terms of, like, you know, addressing uh, low production, low agricultural production uh, in terms of uh, addressing poverty. Uh, that is, of course, addressing poverty is a long-term, I would say, strategy, and there it's a, it's mm -hmm. a multi-dimensional uh, mm -hmm. issue, and uh, so we need multi-dimensional programs for that. But um, in terms of increasing the agricultural productivity, have we done something? How we have supported the government of Timor-Leste? I think uh, we have been discussing already in the previous uh, points uh, mentioned it. I think that UN as UN uh, have looked at the national uh, plan, SINAP plan, and then as the basis of where we are coming. And as UN, we have developed our internal program for Timor based on that priorities from the government. And then we as different agencies have given our mandate and our facility to do ABCD, have basically put ourselves in different pillars of that UN plan to support Timor. So for example, in the pillar number one of that plan for the UN, that is basically food security and nutrition, um, uh, WFP and UNICEF are leading that pillar and then we have FAO we have uh, like 15 different agencies that will come and say okay we can support in different levels what we're trying to do and then with the in support of the government and the coordination that we have been discussing um, we are looking going forward in the come in in this year <laughs> for basically uh, doing investment cases based on what already the government have planned in order to allocate our own resources, our own technical capacities, our own capacity to at different levels, policy implementation, um, partnership, etc., to be allocated ourselves and say we are able to contribute to this area, this area, this area. So then we are coming not as an UN agency, but we come as the UN supporting the government in a very meaningful way uh, going into the next few years because we only have few years to go to 2030 and then we need to be Seven able years. to 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 put things in perspective and then in this investment case look at what we need to do in the short term in the medium term and the long term because as you mentioned rightly are activities that will take long time but they are very very key activities that we can start to implement right now that will change the story and that's what we are trying to work so um my main partner here in the co-chair of this pillar is UNICEF. It doesn't mean that we don't have the other support of the other agencies, but basically we are putting our thinking cup and say, okay, how as the UN are we going to move forward to meaningful change the story and work with the government in actual getting results. We now have, a, I think we have come to the agreement that we cannot have more plans, more strategies, with, we need to move into action that give results. And that's where we are coming from the UN. Excellent, thank you so much. Mano Detta, let me quickly get back to you before I go to Bilal Pai again on nutrition. Um, uh, Mana Cecilia rightly mentioned that UN's role is a supporting role. We, yeah. we are supporting arm of the development sector. We are global supporting and enabling arm. We cannot run ahead of the government. Yeah. It's government's responsibility. Uh, but of course, we are there to support, yeah. to create an enabling environment, to help, yeah. to provide technical assistance, uh, to provide all kinds of assistance. Uh, 
but increasing agricultural productivity is a huge issue in terms of addressing this emergency. Yeah. As Bilal mm -hmm. Bhai rightly mentioned that, you know, uh, it is not close to an emergency. It yes, is I'm an emergency. Right. We are in emergency. Yeah, emergency. So what uh, uh, steps are being taken by the government to increase the agricultural productivity? If yes. you could just share with us, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. two, three major steps. Yes. Uh, I think I do agree with what Mana Cecilia mentioned it that each of the EU agency has their own, own, own job in order to, uh, to mandate help, to mandate, job. To, Very true. To, to help uh, government. For example, uh, FIO has a, has a mandate to, to support one of the projects, for one or of projects such as a CA. Um, another uh, WFP, for example, working with us in order to identify pests and disease, su support us and also work work in collaboration with to identify the data analyze the data and also identify the importation of data importation of food which is we we publicate every three months this is a good cooperation with the un agency apart from that uh, the strategy on how to respond to low productivity the government has the strategy to improve food security particularly the to increase the production and productivity of of step food. For example, we uh, allocate more budget in, in seeds, in, sorry, seeds, seeds, seeds right. production, right. local seeds production, because the, the, the seeds, uh, seeds pro local seeds are seeds that uh, resilience to the climate change. We've been uh, analyzed uh, the, the seeds in order to uh, yeah, seeds that adaptable for the climate in Timor-Leste resistant to the pest and disease, which is another another a part of this. Uh, it, the the budget will not go outside to purchase the seeds from Indonesia, for example, but the budget will circulate in Timor-Leste from the Ana Profico uh, Association, National Association of Seed Producers, that we uh, assist them in order to produce seeds. That's one of the things that we, uh, to, to respond the the productive, the low Sorry. productivity and low production. And also infrastructure, for example, irrigation, schemes of irrigation. The government invests a lot f for the irrigation and also some support from the JICA, from the government of Japan, investing in, in irrigation, investing in how we can develop a water use association. Very true. And also the government itself also investing in, in yeah, apart from seeds, fertilizer, and all agricultural inputs in order to, to increase the uh, production and productivity. We, we acknowledge that with the limitation of the budget, that is why we just concentrated in, in nine big, big schemes irrigation. For example, applying organic, organic fertilizer uh, that we Im imported from Indonesia, Popnasa, which is increase, can increase the productivity of rice from 2.5 up to 6.0 ton per hectare. Has uh, already increased. Or yes, was, in has already increased. Has right. already increased uh, up to uh, up to now is the the fourth year of this implementation, and also uh, apart from this, uh, the benefit of the uh, to increase in the productivity also conserve the conserve the land, the soil, because we have a lot of problem of uh, soil in Timor Leste. You mentioned Manor, yes. land and soil. I mean that yeah. reminds me, land reforms is another issue. Yes. Then are we supporting the farmers also in terms of their capacity building, in terms of in terms of their technical uh, yes. build of their technical know-how? Yes. So what are we doing on those two fronts? I mean farmers support. Yeah and the land reforms. And then I come to Mao Felipe, yeah. he wanted to add something mm -hmm. and then we go to Bilal. Bhai yes, on land, land reform is some, some other issue, but in order to support our farmers, we have 412 extension workers that was alloc uh, they, they were allocated in each of Sukus uh, to provide assistance, technical assistance to our farmers. They are polyvalent, that means that they can understand about, about agriculture, livestock, mm -hmm and also uh, fisheries, forestry, they all be trained uh, as, a, as a extension workers, but polyvalent uh, knowledge and skill that they have. And also with some support from uh, another agency, we, we, we support them with some refresh training for them, because 
uh, agriculture is keep innovating. So some of technical assistance that we can provide to them, so they can teach other the, uh, our farmers in order to implement what we call it. Uh, for example, good good agriculture practices, practices and also smart agriculture, climate change. That's the thing that we need to, to support them. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank yes. you, thank you, thank you, Mana Date. Mao Felipe, yeah. you wanted to yeah. add something, and then yes. Mana Cecilia also wants to add. Uh, Th something. Thank you for giving me opportunity to add. I just uh, want to reiterate about your questions relevant to food insecurity. I think I hear you are say asking about why food is insecure in Timor Leste, in Timor. and I heard. Mana Cecilia from WFP responded by starting poverty was one of, one of the cows and uh, product, low production is another and uh, UN is here to support. I think I would like to respectfully disagree. We are uh, allied, not only supporting role, because you need to help us to allocate right amount of money. You need to help us in uh, designing right intervention and bringing in uh, experts that will help us in tracking, implementing and investing uh, the government priority. Because food insecurity is worse in here in Timor-Leste. It's an uh, emergency, worse emergency situation in Timor-Leste. And uh, the, this started, this affected whole food system from the production as Mana Dizi uh, Maria Odette have exactly explained, we have low productivity, we are working on infrastructure, we are uh, getting improved in seed productions, but we need to help farmers to produce more. We are also marketing, warehousing, a lot of food waste is out there, distribution is a problem, road connection is it's not good. It's a whole system actually. Whole you system know? is not it's working. Whole whole people are not consumption <laughs> healthy diet. I think Dr. Freddy will, will help you understand that more better. So there is a lot of, of work that the UN need to help us here yeah. from, from whole level, from Definitely. the government level at the strategy down to community level. And I have seen a lot of good practices that the uh, UN have helped us. You supported us from down to uh, agriculture level. You introduced conservative agriculture. You help our farmers to be more climate uh, adapted uh, uh, farmers. You also help us in policy design uh, and, and a lot more. I, 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 I will not elaborate more. So stay with us more and uh, don't back up as a supportive role. You have to involve because uh, we, uh, this is seven years time, we want to count how much have we gone. In 2030, we need to measure Timor-Leste's progress. And I think Timor-Leste can be an example. This is a small country with a small population. This is fertile soil. We have water source everywhere. And we have a, we have a good uh, hard workers people that we can, uh, we can invest in. And so please work with us. Now we yeah. are with you, Mao, <laughs> Mao Felipe. 100%, 100%. I will take in uh, Mana Cecilia's comments. Um, you know, Mana Cecilia, you wanted to add something to that. Um, bringing in more resources, more investment, more support, I more enabling technical assistance. Well, <laughs> I, technical I, assistance. I think I want to make a, clari a, a couple of points of clarification. First one, we are not at risk of food insecurity. We already have 22% of the population Which in is food, food insecurity in crisis level. Yes. In crisis level. So let's make that clear here. We are not going to be at risk. We are already there, at and risk. we have 22%. That's number one. Number two, it's a very small country, 1.3 million people, with a national budget of $2.3 billion. It's not a small budget. It's an enough budget to make a difference. The issue is we as the UN needs to be able to look at where the budgets are going and advise, advocate and look how that money needs to be properly allocated to get results, not to keep the status quo, is to change and change. And what Manu uh, was absolutely right in saying is like, we as the UN, need to help the government at all levels. 
there are, pe there are agencies that look at the policy level, the framework level, there are agencies that look at the implementation in the field doing the actual work that shows that they can change the story if they do it in this way and this way. So we as the UN needs to be in all the levels and I absolutely agree with my Felipe. We are there and we will help you and we will do everything because the possibility of change it exists because we have a small population, we have a big um, budget, we have a very fertile line, land, we have a, it's just basically look into how we can change the story and that's where we as the UN come, we want to change the story in support of the government but not only at that level, no, we need to be in which level we need to support and sometimes capacity strengthening is confused like I only tell you that you need to do A, no, sometimes we need to take the hands and say let's go and do it together and we show you how it's done so we change the story. So I think that I just wanted to clarify these little points. <laughs> not at all, everything we do, we do it for Timor-Leste. Uh, Bilal Bhai and uh, Dr. Frederick, thank you so much. Um, you know, you have already um, enlightened us with your reflections and with the knowledge and information. Um, let's deep dive into the matter of nutrition. What is nutrition or malnutrition? Or what are the drivers? And what are the reasons that, you know, in Timor-Leste, the stunting is 47% among children under five, then we have more than 8.6% malnutrition among women. So what are the drivers? What is happening? Uh, please walk us through. Bilal Bhai, first to you, and then uh, Dr. Frederick Bosco to you. Data is telling us what are the key drivers um, of uh, especially maternal and child malnutrition uh, in Timor-Leste. Um, poverty, of course, is a, is a driving factor. And if you look at child poverty, it's even higher uh, than the poverty in adults in Timor-Leste. Almost half of the children live below the poverty line, and that impacts everything. But if you look at data, uh, you know, it starts from uh, pregnant women. And uh, in Timor-Leste, pregnant women have a high rate of anemia, uh, which means they're not getting enough iron, uh, which is very important to have healthy babies. Uh, and that comes from first from diet. So there are, you know, um, practices uh, around diet uh, in addition to access to, uh, to healthy diet. But also um, the iron tablets which are available from the health facilities, uh, you know, uh, that uh, and antenatal care visits, uh, those are also not done um, uh, as adequately as we would like. Uh, we almost have half of the pregnant mothers that deliver at their homes. Uh, that also uh, is a big risk factor. And it sort of starts from there. Now, when a child is born, um, there are uh, some very alarming statistics uh, that, uh, that we have uh, uh, discovered which are driving uh, malnutrition. First is that 53% of children are not initiated breastfeeding uh, when they're born, 53%. Uh, instead, they're given uh, sugary water or porridge filter water, um, and that has to do with practices, uh, sometimes formula milk as well. Um, then 28% of children in the first six months, they've, they've already started given solids. As we know, children cannot have anything other than breast milk in the first six months. So if 28% of children are given solids already, that, that impacts. Then from six months when you start giving solids to a child, from six months to 23 months, in that, we found out that 87%, 87% of children are not getting nutritious diet uh, in that age group. Um, usually children in that age group are fed with rice or porridge. Um, so they're, they're missing on, on, on that. Uh, when a child turns two years old, then it's already too late to reverse stunting. Stunting is 100% preventable starting from before a child is born. But even when the child is born in the first two years, if interventions were made like, you know, breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding, nutritious diet from six to 23 months, uh, the child can reverse stunting, can out, come out of stunting by the time the child turns two years old. So you can see that data is telling us, uh, one important other data is on, uh, uh, on hygiene and sanitation. 
we also found out that 94% of parents do not wash their hands uh, at critical uh, uh, times, such as after feeding their children, uh, you know, or um, after uh, cleaning their children. We do not wash hands. Okay. okay. Uh, we do right. not take care of the uh, sure. hygiene and sure. uh, proper. Sure. Another critical factor is uh, uh, hygiene and sanitation. Uh, so we found out that 94% of parents do not wash their hands at critical uh, uh, times. Uh, for example, after uh, cleaning their child uh, or before feeding their children. So all of these, you know, data and, and we, uh, you know, uh, call these th this critical uh, time period first thousand days from the time a mother becomes pregnant to the second birthday of a child. And all these things are going wrong in Timor-Leste in this period. And these are the sort of key drivers, I would say, of uh, stunting and, and, and wasting. Um, so, um, uh, you know, data is telling us uh, what's going wrong. Um, uh, in terms of our response, uh, you know, I'll just give one example. Uh, as you can see, a lot of this has to do with practices and behaviors. Um, and, and UN, uh, uh, you know, so is supporting the Ministry of Health, uh, not only in training the health workers and also uh, nutrition coordinators at health facilities, but also coming up with, uh, with a health, uh, a community health program where uh, we, for the first time, introduced community health workers uh, that are from the communities, from the aldeas, uh, that go household to household. They know exactly which mother is pregnant, which baby is born, and they create a lot of awareness about these issues, about breastfeeding, about hygiene, about immunization, about going to the health uh, facilities. So they create that demand on the ground. And I'm very proud to say that the Ministry of Health has taken that on as part of uh, their uh, structure and uh, right now around 50% of the country is covered. Uh, with that, uh, we have produced extensive training uh, materials for these mother support groups through the Ministry of Health and it will be scaled up in the next five years to 100% of the population. So that hopefully will address some of these driving factors that are causing malnutrition in children and mothers. Uh, Dr. Frederick uh, Bosco, we come back to you again. Uh, nutrition. Bilal Bhai just mentioned, um, maybe if you could just for, for the sake of further knowledge of us, for our knowledge and for the knowledge of, the knowledge of our viewers, uh, what is nutrition and what is, let me put it this way, what is nutritious food? And uh, Bilal Bhai also mentioned uh, another thing which I would like to seek your opinion on, um, that um, the, he mentioned drivers of malnutrition. Right. So what do you think in terms of drivers of malnutrition? Is it lack of knowledge or is it, is it lack of availability of nutritious food? Thank you very much. I, I will, I will uh, start from the nutritious food. Uh, if you are talking about nutritious food, it's mean that uh, all the food that we consume, it should have the um, balance of the nutrition uh, in terms of uh, proteins, in terms of vitamins, minerals, and also uh, lipids. So all, uh, all this uh, balance uh, should contain in uh, the food that uh, one will consume. Once there is no balance, then it will cause, uh, of course, uh, malnutrition also. So uh, if we see in Timor-Leste, uh, there are uh, very difficult for people to access the, the nutritious food. Uh, in terms of the availability of the nutritious food, food in, in the country also very lack. So main, uh, our uh, food uh, right now, major percentage of our food come from outside. It, it means that imported food. So imported food sometimes also uh, we cannot, uh, in the country system also, we, uh, we, we don't have the proper system to control the, the content of those foods that come in from outside. And, and the other, other, other condition that we have also, because these foods that come from outside is very much, uh, you can find everywhere here in country. Uh, so if we talk about the nutritious food, uh, we are urging people to, to consume the nutritious food, but if we don't also, we don't uh, ensure that nutritious food is available in the country, it will, it will also drive uh, 
people to consume uh, whatever they have, but it's not uh, really uh, nutritious food that will benefit their, their condition. So this is also, I'm, uh, I'm just mentioning this, I also already uh, would like to also to talk about the driven uh, factors. Um, other factor also, if we see um, the data that mentioned by uh, Mount Bilal is very true. Or oh, that's why if we see uh, the lack of knowledge of uh, people is there. But also other things, um, the access to the health service also is still lack because some of, uh, of uh, Minister of Health uh, right now is already, uh, the health service already cover most of our, our uh, very remote area, but some of the area is still not uh, well covered. And also in terms of human resource, uh, we still face problem because uh, we, uh, health professionals uh, to be deployed to those uh, very, remote areas, uh, very remote area also we still face uh, problem in this regard. So uh, in terms of human resource, in terms of uh, the logistic uh, and also support, also we still face a uh, problem. But not only that, uh, Minister of Health right now is trying to, to fulfill those gaps. Uh, several interventions already made by Minister Feld. I'm talking about the integrated program called Solina Familia. It's one of the one of the strategies that Minister Feld is using to ensure the universal health coverage and also, of course, uh, to address this uh, malnutrition issue. And on the other side, uh, Minister Feld, uh, with collaboration with uh, WFP and also UNICEF. Uh, is providing uh, with, with uh, Minister of Health the supplement for, for the pregnant mothers uh, with the malnutrition condition, and also, of course, uh, for, uh, for also for uh, children with uh, malnutrition. So this is what uh, Minister of Health uh, currently doing in order to also uh, address uh, malnutrition issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mao Frederick. Very kind of you. My Felipe, you wanted to add something and then uh, we want to close the program. Just to continue, uh, acknowledging what they have uh, uh, mentioned, uh, based on whatever we have done in country from the UN and government, the Prime Minister in, in, in Tokyo summit uh, for during the Nutrition for Growth so summit have made a commitment. The commitment says that we would like to reduce low birth weight uh, to less than 7%. And uh, I'm glad that uh, you know, all these things are happened. We want to increase universal access to health service to 100% from the under five children, pregnant and lactating women. We want to improve infant and young child feeding. Uh, I think uh, you know, the, the, there was a flag that we need to have uh, this feeding practice more than 70%. We want to increase access to social protection. We have both Adamai, there are some phones that are now running. We want to have that uh, uh, increase the coverage uh, to, throughout the country. We want to improve access to sanitation and hygiene, as was mentioned, because not everybody washed their hands uh, in this critical moment. And of course, treat the wasting children under five uh, uh, to cover everybody, more than 80 percent, it will be good. So this commitment is made by government. Government with the commitment also for, by the President of Republic, we put money, uh, 10 million of them every year, 50 million for, for all together for, for five years. So my point that I want to make here that there is a commitment, there is a good practice out there, identify more best practices so that we can invest more. Thank you, Mount Felipe. Thank you so much. Uh, let me go quickly to Mana Cecilia, Mano Dete, Bilal Bhai, and Dr. Frederick. What are your three takes? I mean, in terms of you know zeroing the hunger, what are your three suggestions? Clarify and and and, and make it even more clear for all the audience. I think uh, poverty is breeding food insecurity, and food insecurity breeds malnutrition. There is not separate things. That's what it is. Kids need to eat enough in the quantity and the quality that they require to be able to grow healthy. This is not happening at the moment, and we need to look at how we're going to break that specific areas. However, all the areas that are supporting the good growth of that kid, 
which is the primary health care services that we have, vaccinations, grow monitoring, uh, breastfeeding, and will support the gains that these kids have there. However, if we are not able to break the cycle of food insecurity and poverty and the fact that they cannot have quality, quantity food, will not be able to move. And that's something that we all together have to work. That's my... Thank you. Strengthening the interlinkages. Good message. Mao Felipe, last message. I will have two. One is, uh, I believe in what we call name and fame. So if we have done good, uh, make it a fame so that we can proud of. I believe that we have done some good practices. Please re report it. Please uh, uh, state it out so people uh, can be proud of and then do more good things. The second, I would like to thank the current government and the current president of republic and also current political leaders at the parliament who have made nutrition and food security on the top of their agenda. President of republic specifically say that nutrition and children and mother's health are his priority. Likewise, the current government also put a lot of investment, a lot of efforts towards the nutrition practices. Uh, Bolso da Major is on phone, uh, improve, invest more in child and maternal health. That is a good thing. And I have met with the ban benches at the, political, at the parliament. They all want to support nutrition and food security. I would like us to advocate more. Make sure that whatever the commitment government and political party have made, they are held on accountable to. And I think with the help of UN and development partners, we can achieve that. Thank you, my Felipe. The message is advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. Mana Odetta, over to you. I think Your as, last as, as Minister that responsible for food security and food insecurity, in terms of implementing programs of food security and nutrition, uh, MAF intervention has uh, been packaged into four main uh, four main programs and 23 uh, sub-programs. The four main programs are uh, 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 enhancing production and productivity, improving market access and value addition, sustainable resources management, and creating an uh, on enabling environment and institutional strengthening. All these four main programs will not work alone, but I think it's most important to work, to work in coordination with all uh, UN agencies as well as other development partners that we can contribute on how we can improve food insecurity in Timor-Leste. Thank you, Mana. Strategy and coordination, I could understand. Thank you so much. Bilal Bhai, over to you for your last message. Sure. I, I'll say uh, the first thing is the implementation, uh, costing and implementation of the National Action Plan, a uh, consolidated National Action Plan on uh, Nutrition and Food Security, the CNAP, uh, because that really brings together all parts of the government. Uh, and I think if we are able to cost and implement it, we'll be able to achieve its uh, main target, which is to reduce uh, stunting by 22 percent uh, by 2030. Second, I would uh, say it's really critical to address the bad practices and behaviors, uh, especially uh, in the first thousand days. Uh, so my main point there is prevention, 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 uh, because prevention is super critical when it comes to uh, malnutrition. And thirdly, I think there's a need to focus on this age group of six months to 23 months, especially their diet. Uh, I think when we talk about food insecurity, often that, because they, they have very specific requirement of diet. And uh, it's a very critical age. Uh, and I would really uh, hope that that would become also an important focus where we can address uh, you know, the diet challenges for that age group uh, between six and 23 months. Strengthening response and more focus on six to 23 months. And prevention. Prevention. Thank you so much, Bilal Bhai. Dr. Frederick Bosco, your last message. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to deliver um, just uh, three messages, as, as you, you mentioned. First, uh, we have to strengthen our primary health care uh, intervention. Uh, through uh, integrated program, uh, we call it Solina Familia. Uh, so that we can reach uh, people that uh, that unreachable uh, up to now, and also to make the proper uh, following up uh, independence of their status, starting from uh, children and, and also adolescents and 
of course, pregnant uh, women, uh, it's uh, important, and uh, adult people also. And then, uh, secondly, I would just like also to uh, mention about the, we have to, uh, as a country, we have to uh, make a uh, major effort, uh, effort in de to diversify our economy. Uh, because only that way, uh, more uh, nutritious food uh, we can obtain in the country and we can be available so that people can consume and, of course, uh, could prevent uh, this malnutrition. And the third, uh, distribution of those foods uh, currently, because it's not uh, proper distribute. Uh, we, we can, as, as we can, we can observe, uh, in the urban area, they could have um, um, more access to the nutritious food, uh, but in, in, in the very remote area, it's very difficult. So uh, I think uh, if we can do that, it will also help uh, support Minister of Health to tackle this uh, malnutrition issue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mao. Strengthening of the systems. Thank you so much, uh, Mao Frederick. Thank you, Bilal Bhai. Thank you, Mara Dete, Mao Felipe, Mara Cecilia. Very, very kind of you for your time today. And let me also thank our viewers for being with us today. Stay tuned for the next episode of One UN, One Voice.